Well, Matthew, tell us about Wire Lawyer and how it, how it came about. So I, I came out of law school in 2000. I graduated from Harvard Law School, and I started with Cleary Gottlieb. Cleary Gottlieb uh, is one of the, you know, generally known as one of the top firms in the world. Uh, it was a pleasure being there. I was surrounded by some of the brightest minds in the profession. I like, you know, pretty quickly found out I wasn't a, a big firm guy, but you know, I, had a, I had a great experience, and I got to really see a, a fantastic practice of the law. After that, I ended up being a general counsel to a media company that Mike Bloomberg put together called NYC Media Group. It was a mix of public and private assets that Mayor Mike put together when he came into office, and my partner was good friends with him. So after that, we went on to found a production company, a media finance entity, and I was the one of the founding partners of the media finance entity called the Slaring Group. And as many lawyers know, when you're working on business deals with, with other people in business, you end up doing a little legal work. That, that's kind of your value add. So in addition to doing these items, I, I opened a practice, in what we call an SML practice, a small to mid-sized practice, less than 10 attorneys. There was, there was two attorneys and our assistant. And I started taking on more work in the IT arena, in, in, arena work similar to the kind of work I was doing on, on the business deals I was working on. And I did some consumer advocacy also because of where the economy was. And it was a passion of mine from, from law school. And I started doing some consumer advocacy, anti-foreclosure kind of stuff. And I got to see the inner workings of all these small practitioners, whether I saw them in court, whether I saw them at these networking events that we would all go to. And the main point of the networking events was that we could all increase our referral Rolodex. About 60% of, of attorney revenue comes from referrals, particularly on the SML side of the bracket. And, and so lawyers find themselves in addition to doing, you know, working long days and nights, they're going to these networking events to try to meet more people so they can refer work back and forth. And I tried, you know, while I was doing my practice, and I kind of knew I was doing with an eye toward doing my own business down the road. But I tried all the technology that was out there. I tried the directory businesses. I tried the lead generation. I tried the practice management stuff. And I just found a lot of it lacking. And I found a lot of it was not focused to the main purchaser of the product. A lot of it was kind of theoretical or it was, you know, it, it was like big firm software distilled down for small practices. But a lot of people needed the angle and they needed the perspective of a small practitioner and what was important to them. And I felt like a lot of the products I was using didn't have that feel to it. Um, so, you know, then I ended up working on something uh, with a gentleman who was the founder of Nano Solar. His name was Martin Rocheisen. And it so turned out that he was also the founder of Finewall. So, you know, here I am with, with the person who was the technical founder of one of the largest, particularly for, for SMLs, uh, legal technology that was out there. And we were both pretty shocked that in 15 years, this product hadn't innovated much. And so we thought it was time for creating a virtual firm experience for these SML practitioners. So you could basically go, you know, there was always, a, there was always a streak in me that loved the idea of the entrepreneurial solo practitioner. And you saw that idea eroding. You know, it used to be very pre prevalent in American society, 50s, 60s. You had these neighborhood lawyers that had these booming practices, and they really represented being the, the mouthpiece for the community. And you saw that change. You saw the, the, the legal profession become much more corporatized, much more conglomerated, and you had these massive, big mega firms that started forming in the 70s and then, and then the, uh, more so in the 80s. And it kind of squeezed all these little solo pr practitioners out, or they uh, joined companies, or they, or they joined bigger firms. And so we said that with technology and creating a virtual firm, because still to this day, the majority of lawyers in the country are solo practitioners. And we said, how can we create a platform where it allows these guys to go out there and hang their shingle, be more entrepreneurial, but allow them to plug right in as though they're operating at a big firm? And we said, nowadays, you can do that with technology, and that's how Waterlawyer was born. The idea of Waterlawyer is an interactive collaborative communication platform for lawyers, just for lawyers. It's very specially tailored to only have lawyer users, to only have uh, workflows that are special to lawyer users. And, but secondly, it provides this whole big firm experience. So not only do you have these other lawyers that you can lean on, you also have these resources. So we start them off with 2 million plus contracts in our database. We start them off with the kind of resources that you only have at a big firm, that I only have at a big firm. And I had this massive document database at my disposal. Any deal I did, I could immediately turn to that database and have, have all the, the ready forms at, at my disposal. And any questions I had, I brought it to the, the partners and the senior associates I was working with. Now, what solo practitioners do is they leverage their bar association in the same way. And they use the bar association listserv as a place where they can ask quick questions to people who are generally like intimate experts in the area, and they use it to exchange documents. I said they're, they're using a 15-year-old technology, not a 20-year-old technology, and there's no intelligence that technology. So what it ends up doing is cluttering your email inbox. You're privy to way too many conversations that you want to have nothing to do with. And there's no archiving of, of all the intelligence, of all the documents that are passing back and forth. No archiving in any kind of like intelligent, usable way. 
And then on top of it, you're limited to the 25, 45, you know, 50 at the most other members in that bar association group. So he said, why don't we scale this up? Why don't we have an interactive community where you're getting some real intelligence, real data about the other people who are the counterparts on these, uh, in these groups or in this online community? So you know who you're dealing with. You get some real intelligence about who they are. You get some real intelligence about what their work product is. You get some real intelligence about how meritorious their, their, their answers and questions are because here they are archived. And, the, and we have a whole point system on our site that, that tries to reflect how much merit people are putting into the site. So if you answer a question on our site, you get points. But if that question gets upvoted by your peers, you get more points. And if that question goes to number one, which means that you answered the best question as far as your peers say in the community, then you get even more points. And so the idea is to gamify something, make it fun, make it interactive, but also to give a real reflection of merit and business utility. Because lawyers don't have time to be on these platforms pinging and posting and, and posting photos. You know, they're, they're doing business. They're on their networking. They're looking for more business. And that, and that comes in the form of getting a referral. You know, that's the main business workflow that, again, leads to 60% of attorney revenues that we've created a platform that allows for transparency, that allows for uh, connectivity, and allows for a process in place that facilitates this stuff to make it happen easier and more effective, but then also maintain and track it so you have some real intelligence about what's working and what's not working. Matthew, I think you know this because we talked earlier, but I think it's absolutely brilliant. I really do. Oh, thank and, you. and when I look at it, you know, it's interesting because we, talk, we both talked about Professor David Wilkins at, at Harvard Law School, and oh, I yeah. inter- interviewed thank him you. recently. And one of the things he talked about was the globalization of, the legal, of legal services. And I think that what you have here is representative of the much-needed modernization that needs to happen for lawyers. Yeah. But also, I am amazed, as, as you've allowed me to look at it briefly, when did you start this? How, long, how old is it? Uh, so we, so concept-wise, it's a little over a year, mm-hmm. but we started really, we launched a 2.0 just in, on July 7th. Okay. So, you know, we're really just a few months Amazing. old. Amazing. Well, you have so many. And we've I mean, grown very rapidly. Yeah. How many, how many lawyers do you have in your system, if you're willing to, to share that? You, you know, we, we don't release uh, the exact number, but we'll suffice to say that we've grown to be the second, uh, at the most, the third largest online legal community. Which is Amazing. The big player is Marndale Connected, and they've been around for probably probably six, seven years now. Yeah. And, you know, they, and they grew, you know, they're big. They're, they grew to 60,000 attorneys, but it basically didn't go anywhere for, for various reasons related to, to LexisNexis, and they've recently been sold, and, and they'll probably be abandoned altogether. So we knew the demand was there, and we knew that nobody was giving the products. Yeah. It, 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 what you said is exactly right on the money. It's like we see a globalization, of not just a practice of law, but the legal service industry. Right. Ways to modernize the profession, make it more efficient, and a lot of it is coming from non-lawyer entities. Right. What we believe in is that we have that same thesis that uh, the law should be more like a business. It should be more efficient. But we're lawyers catering to other lawyers. And so we're not looking to disintermediate them. We're not looking to automate, you know, the lawyer and the obsolescence. We're looking to create platforms that allow these guys to interact and be, and be better at what they're doing. And then the feedback we get from them is that, they, is that they love it because we're not treating them like they're another entity that we're just trying to monetize and, and make profit off of. That's really interesting. The other thing is as we look towards the pending legislation with potentially public ownership of law firms, what I love what you said is that what you're doing is you are certainly working towards modernization, but one of my fears with public ownership is that Walmart and Target will come in and buy up everybody, and we will lose the ability of the trial lawyer to really run the show. So you kind of are the best of both worlds. You know what? That's a a great way to say it, too, because it's, you know, we believe that a lot of rules that are out there, ethical rules and and well-intended rules, hold back lawyers from being better business people. Mm-hmm. So that's side exactly what you said. You don't want to see this uh, everybody going public like we have with the big banks, and then you lose accountability. You lose professional yep. responsibility, particularly in this space where, where, where that's most needed. And then why is that? Because lawyers are advocates. You know, they're, they're representatives of people. And when you lose that kind of trust and that kind of accountability, that can destroy your practice. And I agree with the, uh, the other lawyers and the, and the bar associations and the, and the state bars uh, about that concern. But then, you know, sometimes we have a, particularly lawyers, we have a habit of overpapering stuff. And then so sometimes we're weighing these guys down with too many rules. So that's where we want to step in. We want to step in and be that platform to help them reign. Like, especially if you're, remember, 55% of the lawyers in the country are solo practitioners. 
private practitioners or, or solo practitioners, you can't be a rainmaker, operator, and back office. Mm-hmm. It's too much with the practice. And then the practice is very, very uh, time intensive between the research and the writing. So we want to step in, but we're stepping in as not something competitive to them, but something that's a, that's a great facilitator of them being able to communicate, collaborate, and do their work better. And that's why we call them partners. You know, we never, we've never called our lawyers customers. They're in the virtual firm, they're partners with each other, and we're a partner with them. And we can, we can all grow together. Yeah, I love that concept. Something else fascinating about your platform. Tell us about the alumni challenge, because I think that's very interesting. So there's always been a complaint from young attorneys to take, particularly these big firms, but even other places, there's just that there's a higher expectation at big firms of mentorship. You know, here you have someone who's walked the path in your shoes 20 years previous, and you get to these big firms, you know, in the law school, especially, a, you know, I went to Harvard, and I love Harvard Law School. You learn a lot of theory, and then you get out there, and now you got to start putting contracts together. And most law schools don't even have a contract drafting class, which is which probably makes up about 75% of the, of the profession now, transactional work. So, you know, you find yourself in a situation where you're lacking mentorship, and that's even at a firm where people are working together and the collective interest is, is supposed to be the highest interest. Now more than ever, that there's so much pressure on the legal industry and there's so much pressure on, on legal jobs, that mentorship is more important than ever. So we've come out with a group product that allows schools and, and bar associations to create a space for that virtual mentorship. Now, why is that helpful to everybody? It's helpful to everybody. Well, schools love it because it keeps their alumni and their students in contact, which is better for both of them. It keeps the alumni in contact with the school. The alumni like it because they feel nostalgic about their school and they want to help out these young attorneys that are coming out. And then, and then the young lawyers love it because they just, they're just they always been looking for that kind of mentorship and that kind of guidance. The beauty of a virtual mentorship is you tell like a busy lawyer at a big firm that you've got to go mentor this young student once a week or twice a week, you're going to be like, absolutely not. Nobody's had, nobody has any time for that. You know, lawyers are out there working these long hours. But the same kind of efficiency that we're creating in their practice of the law, we're trying to create in them being able to mentor. So mentor can be something as easy as you get on the platform and you answer a question that some younger attorneys that, that went to your same alma mater by asking, and the good thing about that is now you net all these points, and so you become someone who's got a, pre- a prestigious profile in our community. You've just created more, you just built up your online reputation, or reputation, and you did it in a way that took a split second as opposed to like going to meet somebody somewhere and walking them through something. But you help them, and you didn't just help them, but you help the other 2,000 people that read your answer to the question. And, and you've also promoted yourself a little bit also, which then in turn promotes your firm and gets you more business. So you know, we're looking to really create this virtual, uh, this virtuous circle where people can, and, and, and this is the big fallacy, and I talk to people who are non-lawyers, and, and here's the thing, the profession has been smeared over the last 20 years, 30 years, between people calling lawyers liars, and they're ambulance chasers, and they're this and that, they don't care about anybody, they really care about making money, and look, every profession has a couple of bad apples in it, but we never cast aspersions upon a whole professional, which quite, a whole profession, which quite honestly, you know, we're one of the last professions that are required to take a lot of ethics schools, you know, from when we're in school and then when we get out. And the fact of the matter is it's just not true. A lot of it comes from political smear campaigns against trial lawyers in particular, which uh, is particularly troubling. Uh, because a lot of these guys, when, when you're, you're lacking a governmental regulatory environment, that's your private uh, regulatory mechanism. And a, and a capitalist society, as far as I heard, didn't have a problem with that. You know, to me, that's, that, that, that's the extent of civilized society working out their differences. They do it in the courtroom, and, and it's beautiful to have private uh, practitioners that can help regulate each other. So that, I mean, that, that, that's a longer story. But the idea here is a lot of people smeared us, and they said, lawyers will never work together. All they care about is making a dime, and they're competitive with each other. And that's just not what the facts are bearing out. The facts are bearing out that if you can put them in a... a they, they collaborate anyway. They do it anyway on their bar uh, associations. And they know that by... A, it's just very fraternal and sororal kind of respect in the profession, where we all appreciate each other and we try to help each other out. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, though, you know what? Unlike other areas, our revenue, 60% of our revenue comes from referrals. So it behooves us to collaborate and work with our colleagues because, you know what? Even if we were totally selflessly motivated, that's where the majority of our revenue is coming through. So we've created a platform that caters to both those sides of you, where you want to help out and you want to do these things, but you feel like you don't have the time. But you know what? You'll have the time if we make it really easy, really efficient, and we're going to get your business on top of it. And, that, and that's why the response we think has been overwhelming, and we think that's why we're growing. Literally, leaps and bounds ahead of anybody who's been out there for, for years longer than us. When you say it's growing, it certainly is. I just looked at your, when you look at the law schools and the alumni challenge, and I pulled up the top law school, University of Miami, and when you open that up, 15,000. 15,000 lawyers, and that's University of Miami. So it's yep. phenomenal growth. As a matter of fact, as a marketer, I would love to know how you're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Uh, well, you know, I got to tell you, it's a mix. Well, first of all, our chief marketing officer is he's brilliant. He's worked at every top uh, advertising agency in the country. And to bring that kind of expertise and experience uh, to lawyers who traditionally have been an underserved market, they've been, they've been a heavily exploited market by legal service providers, but they've been an underserved, uh, underserved market because a lot of other entities out there feel like they don't understand lawyers and they don't understand the legal practice. So, A, we've, our team has done a phenomenal job of that. The second thing is that there's just so much pent-up demand there. Uh, and we knew it. We knew it by looking at the listservs. We knew it by looking at LinkedIn groups for lawyers. We knew it by looking at, you know, all the indicators. And we knew it by talking to the lawyers. You know, more than any of these other legal technology platforms that are out there, whether they're not, a lot of these companies have been started by non-lawyers. And they don't get lawyers, and that's why the lawyers have resent towards these companies. Even if they're helping them out a little bit, there's a little bit of resent because they tend to overprice, sell the mark. We're lawyers. You know, we know where these guys have been, and we've seen that perspective. And that's why there's, like, a large level of premium access on our site. Come on our site, use it. You, we believe, you know, we're like the inner, we're, we're the internet three point model. You know, we believe. Welcome, come to the site. There should be plenty of stuff for them to use for free. We want them to get comfortable. We know there's a, 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 a large barrier to overcome to get lawyers to embrace this technology, and they think it's taking away time from them, them doing what they need to do. But we have so much faith in our product that once they start using it and they realize that it makes them more efficient and it makes them a better attorney, that they'll come and they'll pay for that premium subscription. And even then, we keep it reasonable. These other guys are charging anywhere between 100 bucks a lead and $1,000 a lead. You know, right now, the cost of our lead uh, with our initial pricing will be between 5 and $10 a lead. And we still have a very robust, lucrative business from doing that. The problem is the Lexus and West have gotten so expensive and they're so uh, tailored for big firms, they've left out the most significant part of the practice. So you have 55 to 75% of our lawyers in small practices that handle the vast majority of legal work out there. They handle much more legal work than that for many more clients because they're doing a smaller a transactional value. So they're probably handling about 90% of, the, of, of American legal matters, and they've been left out from having any good technology because no one's taking the time to focus on them and give them something that they appreciate and will use and be willing to pay for, but, but, give, but give them something that they, that they need and is necessary, and then you have to be able to get it to them. And we've done a good job of getting it in front of them, and, 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 and once they use it, they, you know, they, they, they stay. It's fantastic. Tell us about how, how can a lawyer get involved. So they go to wirelawyer.com. Where do they start? So the very first thing, they go to wirelawyer.com. They've come through different channels. They've come because they've heard a, a report from someone like you. They've come because one of our uh, email campaigns or they've been referred. You know, referrals work in the, in the profession also. I'm the lawyer saying, I need to get uh, work to this kind of lawyer. And so I'm going to tell four or five other lawyers to get on the system and do it. And if they can't do it, please recommend a friend through the system. Now, why are they going to do it that way? Because it's so much more efficient than us calling around in circles five to 15 times to get to that person. So get everybody on the platform, and that becomes your short list of attorneys that you can refer matters to, and they can refer matters back to you. And what we're seeing is about 50% of attorneys are referring just for the reciprocity of getting referrals back. And what they told us is, guys, I would collect split fees on this stuff because I feel like I'm putting in work on this stuff, but it's impossible to collect. It's just too much time and back and forth of emails and, fun, you know, and nobody has any time for it. Now, the other half we see are collecting split fees and they're putting in the commensurate amount of work on it or they're accepting joint responsibility on it. So we're creating a platform where we encourage that to go up. We want people to collaborate. We're going to track it and automate it for you so you don't have to worry about calling every two weeks. And so this is the word that's gotten out. It's gotten out because our product is inherently viral. You can, I mean, you can use, we put in a lot of stuff on the platform that's very useful if you just want to plug in and you don't want to communicate with anybody. There's plenty of stuff there. There's documents. Um, you can find like, some answers to questions. You can find plenty of stuff there that's useful like, if you just want to use it unilaterally. But the real value kicks in, and if you ask all of our lawyers, you know, we did a survey of all of our lawyers, 87% came back and said, we really want to get referrals out of the system. And that's a no-brainer. I mean, referrals bring you in revenue. The better part of it was that 60% of our community said we're there to give referrals because we actually don't have a convenient mechanism, 50% of what walks in my door, I have to refer out. If I don't have a convenient mechanism for doing it, if I'm either turning them, turning them away or telling them I can't help them, uh, or I'm giving them to somebody that I'm not satisfied with. So, you know, we've, we've, we've cured both those pain points. So there's something very inherently viral about our platform because the lawyers are getting on, they're connecting with their whole network, they're uploading their address book to be able to see what their whole network looks like, and then we provide the process for them to, to be able to start referring work to their, to, not only to their network, but get refer work that's coming in to their practice area. And I got to tell you, we just had, we had a really phenomenal response with that. I'm a big advocate of referrals. You, you gave the numbers, which I didn't know, and you said, what did you say, 60% of income is through referrals? Is that what you said? 
Oh, from what we've been seeing, it could be even higher. But yeah. as far as the published numbers we've seen, we've seen yeah. 60, 50 to 60%. Yeah. On our platform, when we surveyed them, the number looks like it's more like 60, 70%. And, I've talk, and an anecdote, I've talked to some guys, and they're like, my whole practice is based on referrals, repeat business and referrals. Yeah. Um, a, a lot of the SNLs just aren't in a position to do the expensive advertising because of the most successful SNLs. And so they, what they're doing is just going to networking events and referring work back and forth. And that's literally where the majority of the revenue comes from. In working with, uh, with attorneys, here's what I've seen. Prior to your platform, there's not been an automated process. It's all been manual. Yeah. And what happens, so many things fall through the cracks. And the reality is, and we all know this, if it's not tracked, you're never going to see the fees. Not because people are dishonest, just because it's just not going to happen. So what you've done here is phenomenal. And again, you talk about, to a certain degree, leveling the playing field by creating this environment, this virtual automated environment, you are allowing a small firm to, to really compete. They could build a much larger percentage of their practice on referrals. That's just not going to happen if they're left to do the whole, the whole thing manually. You just hit the nail right on, right on the head. Like we're, not, we're not saying that they're going to compete for work with big law. You know, big law mm-hmm. does a very distinct and different kind of work, a lot of capital market stuff, M&A, big commercial litigation between Fortune 500 companies. That's not doing the kind of legal work that's intimate. To Americans, it's the kind of stuff that you need on a daily basis, whether it's leases or a, a trust in estates matter because, you know, uh, uh, you have a sick uncle who might pass away soon. Domestic matters, you know, family law matters, kind of things that we deal with on like a very regular basis. And what, what the uh, intelligence data shows is that Americans want more legal services and more legal protections, but they feel like they can't access it. They feel like it's going to be prohibitively expensive. Yeah. They don't know how to go about intelligently uh, getting into it. And, and, and so... That's where our system allows these guys to be in contact with each other so well and know exactly what they're doing. And it's an environment that's way more comfortable with them. Lawyers hate using lead gen. FNLs are, are forced to use expensive lead gen that provides 90 to 95% bad leads. Who pays for a product that 95% of the time doesn't work? Whereas 60% of your revenues come from referrals. But I can tell you, you know, no one, and you know, I'm almost, we're, we're like, we have mixed feelings about being so vocal about it, and then part of us is like, we want to be quiet about it also, because when everybody realizes that we're hitting that sweet spot yeah. of how SMLs interact and how they do business, and again, it goes back to, the other guys never did it. These other, these other uh, companies out there, especially big legal tech like Lexus and West, how would they know what an SML was? And they try to come up with products every now and then, which tend to be diluted enterprise products, which don't fit the market well. Yeah. But, you know, we know what these guys want. We're out there with them every day. We talk to them every day. They're on our site every day. And, and you know, and I practice as an SML. And so we know what these guys want. And, and not only, like you said, will they not collect if there's no tracking going on, it behooves you. If more than half of your revenue is coming from referrals, and, I, and, and any of these guys will admit that, and then you ask them, well, who's your biggest refer? I don't know. Well, how much did you get in trust and estate referrals versus trademark referrals? Uh, I don't know. I generally know who the people were that we deal with, and sometimes if it's like a mid-sized firm, the person who talks to me, I don't even know who they deal with. And I'm like, how are you expected to grow your business? And again, it's, it boils down to lawyers are very smart people, but it, sometimes they're not smart business people because they're feeling overwhelmed by their practice. Yes. They're putting in so many hours into mm-hmm. getting these documents right and getting these motions right, and it's important, and then they spend the rest of the time rainmaking. And they're not spending a lot of time doing data analysis, but you've got to do that if you're a smart business person because you've got to know where all your revenues are coming from. You've got to know how to increase that, and you've got to know how to broaden that, that scope. And, then, and, and again, that's what our platform is doing for them. So, you know, look, they don't have to spend too much time doing it. They're not technology professionals. You know, let us do that thinking for you. But we estimate, so we know that 60% of revenues are coming from that. We estimate that $100 billion a year is transacting in the SML market with no technology in place to facilitate it. The other thing we didn't even talk about is the fact of how many man hours your platform will save them. Absolutely. Because, yeah, because they don't have right. to do this manual process. I think it's phenomenal. I, I really do. And, and to, to all of our listeners and readers, I mean, this is, this is a game changer. This is a no-brainer. One final thing I'd like to mention, I, I, I use platforms like Elance, things like that, and part of the reason I enjoy doing that is because when I don't know, because of the global world we live in, I may need some help that, that's not local help. And when I do that, it's kind of, there's a little bit of a uneasiness when you just go out and pick somebody in, you know, a faraway place. But with your platform, as with a place like Elance, there's some, there's some confidence that I have because I know that you're behind it. I know that if something goes wrong here, I have some measure of following up and saying, hey, look, I never, you know, this, 
whatever. So I, I think that that just puts your mind at ease. And again, it's 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 a way to facilitate the types of relationships, collaborative relationships, and others that probably wouldn't happen if it was left to be done all on a manual basis. Yeah, that that is absolutely so right. It's um in <clears throat> an interesting report. I don't know if I believe this, but one of uh, some that we know in the legal enterprise space. So a report came out recently and it said that lawyers are unlike other people. Well, that wasn't too big a surprise. So the twenty five percent so the twenty five percent who are like other people are the ones that tend to be uh, the, the networkers that go out and network a little bit more. And the other seventy five percent are the are the professional operators, you know? They're the one and quite honestly, if I remember back to, to my clear reality experience, I would say that that ratio is definitely accurate, if not if not even more so. You know, it might be even like ninety ten. And that's fine. I'm not saying anything disparaging about anybody. But what it does say is some people would rather be in their office or at the courtroom, you know, doing their work. And so right. now they don't have to go to those mixes. You know, we yeah. make it easier for you to do it here. And we're never saying only use this. Do both. We're not saying stop going out and meeting somebody. Right. You know, business always has to have some kind of face-to-face component. We're not saying don't pick up the phone and call them. Right. Of course you want to gain that kind of intimacy. But we make it easier for you to figure out just the right person to work with. We, we, we give you a vast amount of intelligence that you're not going to get anywhere. You're not going to get it at a mixer. And, and, you know, I push back a little bit on the other side, too, because just because you sat down and had a drink with somebody for five minutes doesn't mean you should do business with them for the next ten years. Even though that's the way we've done it historically. The better way is that you mix both of those. Have intelligence about these people. Map out what your legal professional graph looks like. Know all the lawyers around you, what their practice areas are. You know, a lot of people have people they can refer to uh, sitting right in their address book, and they can't remember who that is. So it's like we help you map that out. We help you see who all those people are. And by no means does that mean don't talk to them. In fact, we're doing a networking event next month. There's a group called ESQ Spot that does networking events for lawyers around the city. And we're bringing them all together face-to-face, you know, let them meet each other and, uh, and dialogue with each other. Wow. We, you know, we, we trust our platform so much that they're going to yeah. come back and say, hey, those guys brought us together. They brought together so many great lawyers. I know I can be doing that on a daily basis right from uh, my seat in my office. That's tremendous. That's tremendous. Well, Matthew, thank you so much for your time today. I think it's uh, phenomenal what you've done here, and I certainly highly recommend and endorse it.